Hey guys, about to play a game with the Asperia Commander deck. I'll be back with you when the game begins. And actually, it looks like it's starting now. So, I'm back with you now. All right, we would like to play first, I think. And I think this hand's keepable. We do need to draw some lands. Maelstrom Wanderer, okay, well. Our bouncing is not especially good against that, but... Uh, we can do other things to slow our opponent down. Hopefully, turning Eddie will be nice, I'm sure. All right, we'll lead with our Triple Cove. Yeah, like, Bounce is so bad against uh, Maelstrom Wanderer, so this is a kind of a bad matchup. That's going to improve things for us, though. We'll play Soul Ring, and we'll play Lightning Greaves, and I'll end the turn. So we can Churning Eddie pretty quickly in this game. Um, we don't really want to use it, though, unless he plays a creature. There's not really a good reason to. Um, for now, I think I just play Favorable Winds. If we draw a land that produces blue, we'll be able to play our commander. Um, immediately put Lightning Greaves on it and get some information um, about our opponent's hand. So that's pretty good. Our commander will be a 4-7 as well, which is pretty nice, I think. Frontier Bivouac. Okay, we drew blue. So if we can resolve our commander here, we're going to be pretty happy. Um, so we're going to try to. If we do, we're going to put the Greaves on her. Pretty good start to the game. Um... Hard to know what I should guess. The first guess is almost never going to hit anything, and not in Commander, you know. In Constructed, it would be better because you know the archetypes and stuff, but I know he doesn't have a land. Um, let's say, like, Thran Dynamo. That's something that many decks have. No. So, but we see this is when we write things down. Uh... Or we can just refer back to this. Consecrated Sphinx is really gross. Asceticism, Proteus Staff, Carometra's Acolyte. Island. You know, I could have named Island. I th That would have been a good guess. Um, but we're not going to get anything on that. All right. So we're going to try to leave this here so I don't have to write anything down. And then you sort of mark them off as uh, he plays the cards that are in his hand. But this next turn, we should be able to get whatever we want. Um, this is a good turn for Churning Eddie, too. We can bounce the Bivouac and his Ramp creature, which will give us a pretty big turn. Zerz Weirding is a great card to get. That'll allow us to basically lock down the game eventually. Um, I'm going to swing first and name uh, Savage Vent Maw. Um, so we're going to say Savage Vent Ma. Now he has an archetype of aggression in his hand. He did not have that before. We need to search our library for anything now. I could get Voidstone Gargoyle and name something in his hand. Um, hmm. Hushwing Griff, you'd think would be good, but the way Cascade's worded is, it doesn't actually stop it. It's only when the spell, it's when the spell is cast. So it's actually pretty crappy. Um, I think I'm just going to get Mist Raven and bounce his mana, dude. Um, and leave mana up for Azorius Charm. I also have Echoing Truth, though, so I could get like a... A good four drop and then just use Echoing Truth. Like a more aggressive four drop like our uh, Archangel, for example. Or uh, Windborne Muse also seems pretty good against him. Angel of Jubilation, also pretty good. Um, doesn't have anything in his hand that makes him pay, pay life. Um, so it's a hard decision. Getting Voidstone Gargoyle and naming the Maelstrom Wanderer is nice, but it also isn't very fun for our opponent. 
Um, so I think I am going to just go with... I could also get Dungeon Geist, I guess. Uh, where was Mist Raven? Yeah, we'll just get Mist Raven. And... We actually can't leave up uh, Azorius Charm or Echoing Truth, but that's okay. We'll get Mist Raven and bounce his ramp. Mist All our flyers, it's important to remember, are a little bigger than they would be otherwise. Um... I may play Zer's Weirding in the near future if we, if it looks like we can keep Asperia in play. And based on what we just saw in his hand, I think we can. Um, so I think I probably do play the Weirding. The Asceticism is a problem, but we can at least bounce it. Um, okay, some more lands doesn't hurt. We're going to swing. Um, and we'll name Consecrated Sphinx. So we're going to say Consecrated Sphinx. Okay. And now, what do we want here? Jellic Arbiter doesn't do a whole lot right now. Um, what would do a decent amount, I think, is not Resolute Archangel either. I'm looking for one of my seven drops, though. Amiria is not that good right now. Angelic Arbiter. Yeah, Angelic Arbiter, based on what's in his hand, seems like it could slow him down. He has the asceticism in play now, though. Maybe we just get another ramp. I mean, a uh, pump effect. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to get another pump effect and be aggressive for now. Um, we do have to tap all our white, but that still lets us leave up mana for Echoing Truth. Although maybe I play Zer's Weirding instead. Yeah, I am going to play Zer's Weirding. Um, so we get to decide whether or not he draws stuff which for the rest of the game while we constantly get to, uh, search our library for a card every turn. Um... So we basically have him in lockdown. We do not want him to get Inferno Titan. So we're going to pay two life to put it into his graveyard. Actually, Angel of Jubilation uh, will negate our Xur's Weirding. So that was a bad idea. I kind of forgot that's how that worked. Um, so <laughs> that was a bad card to grab, I think. Um... He's getting close to being able to play his big scary thing, which means we probably want to bounce the land this turn if we can. Um, and we can, so. Savage Vent Maw maybe about to come into play. We'll definitely bounce it and uh, let's say Frontier Bivouac. If that's what he decides to do with our Churning Eddy. Um, Consecrated Sphinx would be pretty good for him right now, annoyingly. No, he's going with the Acolyte. All right. He has Hexproof, so I kind of forgot about that. Um, I guess I'm going to use Echoing Truth here. So we're going to go Echoing Truth on the Asceticism. And our opponent's Scoop. So basically, Xur's Weirding can lock down the game. Um, we were going to be able to kill this and never let him draw another land. Uh... And just keep attacking him while we get to add stuff to our hands. So that game worked out pretty well in our favor. Got to see what happens when the deck actually gets Zer's Weirding. Doesn't happen all that often. Um, if you're doing it, it's probably not a good idea to get Angel of Jubilation, obviously. Uh, I kind of overlooked that. Um, the Angel of Jubilation is good, just not when Zer's Weirding's in play. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.